I spent the last five minutes working on that intro. I wanted something quick and easy. So that's what I ended up doing. All right, welcome back to another episode of Let's Plant Recap. My name is Chuck. And what I do here in Recap is that I have a look at the latest comments and react accordingly. This seems to be a trend in the past few recaps. I have a new plan every week. There's a little bit of story to this ones. So as you can see, there are a few, well, more than a few. There's several, one, two, three, four, five. There are five pots here. And these are what you would classify as filler plants. There was this new nursery in town about 15-20 minutes away from our home and I told my wife that I wanted to check it out so, so we drove all the way there. It didn't have much succulents in their collection. It's more of house plants, uh, citrus, flowering plants, ornamentals and stuff like that. So when I saw their little succulent section over in the greenhouse, I immediately had a look. And as you can see, here's a few small plants. These two right here is our Sedevaria Mayalen. I've already got a bunch of these growing in my garden but I figured I could use more for some fillers and now is a good time to propagate them. And these three here are Sedum spatulifolium subspecies pruinosum and well depending on whether they stay white or they can turn a bit purple there are a, there are a couple of cultivars for this. The, the white one would be Cape Blanco, also known as Silver Blob in Australia. And the one that turns purple would be the Purpureum. Again, I already have a few of these in the garden, but I needed more to fill up more space. Because if you would remember, I used some of them in the mound in the middle. And some of them got burnt during summer. So I got reinforcements. It has been raining for the past few days. And I'm worried that it would be cutting into my filming time this weekend. It actually just finished raining a few minutes ago. According to the weather app, it's currently 5 degrees Celsius and feels like 2.4 degrees. It certainly feels like it, hence the jacket. I'm really hoping that it doesn't go full out rain tomorrow. At least there was a forecast that it's only going to be overcast during the day and the rains might come later in the evening. And I'm really counting on that because otherwise I won't be able to film tomorrow. Although I did try coming up with backup plans, so my main plan is to work on the landscape in the garden, but if tomorrow is still too wet, then I might just work on another topic. I was thinking that now is a good time to do my winter propagation, so that might work. Another thing I could work on is cleanup and maintenance because I've been making a mess during my past few weeks of landscaping. And due to all of the rains, the grass, the weeds, they're just all starting to grow. They're actually spreading like crazy right now. So, so again, the topic for the next video would depend on a few factors. If it's still raining, then I would be doing the propagation bits because at least I can do it under the alfresco. If it's not raining but still too wet, then I'll just do the garden maintenance. But best case scenario, everything's all good. The soil is dry enough, not too wet, not too drenched, no, no flooding. I could work on the next phase of the landscaping and I'm planning to continue working on the Patreon shrine. Anyway, on to the comments. These are the comments on episode 72, creating the raised succulent garden bed. First one is from Fresh Chicken Vlogs, 13th person here, love you Sariska Pades. I don't know how you do it but you're always early for my videos, one of the first few commenters. And like I mentioned in my comment, I usually... I usually review and watch my videos several times before I publish them, so those first maybe 10 views, they're mine. So you might actually be the first one to view this episode. Wow, keep it up. <laughs> Next is from Monolop saying, wow, that's a lot of things to clean up, but I guess it's going to be worth it afterwards. Yes, it's all worth it. From Leslie Solway Boyd, the blues will look spectacular. Can't wait to see. I'm really hoping that I could get to start working on that for the next episode, but if the weather's not too good, then I might have to push it back. But yeah, I can't wait to start working on it. From John Sheffield, creating a race bed helps to change the terrain and give you better lines and shape for the design. Definitely agree. And a suggestion for the Patreon bed, Blue fire glass could be added to give a sea feel. You know what, John? I really love this suggestion. I, 
I actually went searching for blue fire glass local in Melbourne. There doesn't seem to be a lot of suppliers for this, although I did find one and they're across town. So maybe one of these days I'll go drive over and see what they have. Because there's a there's a specific color that I have in mind. I am not after something that's very dark blue. I'm it's more of a cyan or light blue-ish. It's hard to explain but yeah. There might be something there and I can't trust the photos that they have online because you know it might be rendering differently on my monitor so it's better if I have a look first hand. And that's definitely going into one of my future trips. So, Blue Fire Glass, thank you so much for the suggestion. I love that suggestion. From Lisette Wonder Woman, can't wait to see the finished product. But we gardeners are never finished. Haha, there will always be another project or updating an old project. Yeah, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> From Tomas Mones Cazon, I think the elegance would work best for the sea. The raised garden bed looks really good, man. I agree. I'm actually uh, checking out my elegance propagations. I'm hoping that I would have a lot of them in time for next spring. Right now, they're all tiny seedlings, but it's only a matter of time before they multiply. From Isa Sidlowska, great video, Chuck. It is very hard to find good instructional videos on how to make a rock garden type raised bed. I know because I looked a lot last week prior to starting in on mine. I wish I had seen yours ahead of time. I think I made a mistake by not watering it in first. Problem is, the way my mind works, I go piece by piece putting together rocks, dirt, planting, and then moving on from there <laughs> when where the spirit moves me. I pray it holds though, I should make a video soon. Yes, I I tend to do I tend to do it that way when I'm working on a level ground, but when I work on raised beds, I tend to work in stages because in the past I used to just work on one small section then work on the next and then the next and the next but I find that eventually they would erode or to just collapse you know I have my soil really loose there's lots of air pockets so eventually they would settle down after how many waterings which is why having top dressing is important for me as well because it at least helps mitigate erosion but yeah I know what you mean, I know exactly what you mean, I used to do that, now I do it less, but I still do it. <laughs> From Soul Sugar Succulent, love it! Echeveria Elegance would love to grow in the nooks and crannies. I love that look. <laughs> yeah, I really love that look. From Succulent PH, here in the Philippines, 4 days of rain non-stop, at least my plants are surviving, lol. Yes, I think I can relate because it's been raining for the past few days, but at least it's not as strong as it is in the Philippines. Here, we would just get maybe one day strong rain, the next day it would just be showers, then more showers and strong rain. You know, It's not every day that we get torrential rain, so it rarely floods here. And if it does, my soil, my soil mix is very fast draining, so it just washes away and within a few minutes, no, no flood. Next is from Grace, and I know it's Grace because she is also on Facebook and she messages me using her English name. So, Grace says, I like this video. I like it too. <laughs> from Kathy Galbraith, another exciting video. The area you worked on looks great as always. Enjoyed the music and the way you set up the video. It's always great to see the kiddos. By the way, you were also sitting in a bowl like Zach. How funny. <laughs> yeah, I was sitting in it hoping that Zach would get into one of the bowls next to me, but he was so busy in the other parts of the garden playing with the pebbles and the truck, so it's so hard getting toddlers to do what you want, you know? From Ashley Wing, LOL, Zach needed a play break because he was too hard at work in the garden. Yeah. I wonder what idea he was cooking up. Aha. And oh, and I would look both ways before crossing the street. Haha, <laughs> your text commentary is always hilarious. Yeah, weird how my mind works sometimes, eh? From Rowena Pingol, no net profit. That's why we're called addicts. Haha, <laughs> you make money so you can buy more. Exactly. 
Hey, at least it's not going out of pocket, so my wife won't kill me for it. Next is from Alex Curtis. Great video as ever, Chuck. Love the editing and what you've done with the spot. Thanks, Alex. I think I've got my editing style down now. It's going to be a signature look. <laughs> the transitions. From Nathan Poole. Another great video and thanks for sharing. I love that little rock wall you created. You have inspired me to create something similar. Mm -hmm. I look forward to your next episode. P.S. Is that an Echeveria Baron Bold you put in? Actually, no. Uh, if you're referring to the, the plants I put at the top, one is a Verugas and the other one is a Barbellion. I have a few Baron Bolds here but they're still quite small so I don't think I'll be using it in any landscape anytime soon. From Given to Grow, Nikki is so cute. Oh my gosh, how she has grown. She just turned 6 months earlier this month. Mounding and rebuilding the wall must have been so much work. This stuff takes so much time so hats off to you. The Angelina will look great with the mound and the stuff establishes itself so quickly that it's a great choice for planting during the colder season. I agree. As for the 12 Apostles Garden, it sure does look familiar. You did a great job. Thank you so much for the shout out at the beginning of the video. You're welcome Denise. Thank you for starting your own Let's Plant. For everyone else who's watching this video, you should go check out Denise's channel. She started the Let's Plant earlier this week or was it last week? So yeah. From Lucy Reeve, love the thumbnail. Thank you so much Lucy. I've, I've been thinking of mixing it up a little because for the past few weeks, I think there's a decrease in the amount of views on my videos. So maybe I need to, to change it up a bit, make things more catchy. So I'm hoping this works. We'll see. From Maya C, you should try a new plant called Semper Vivum Pitoni. It looks beautiful and would probably match the idea you're going for. The baby looks so cute and the name matches too. Thank you. Thanks for the suggestion as well. I I look it up online. It looks quirky and quirky is good. I'm thinking of working on a Semper Vivum garden in the near future. I'm not sure when. Because right now all I keep buying are Echeverias. But I do have a few Semper Vivums in one of the spots right next to the Alfresco. So from where, I si I, from where I'm sitting, I'm looking at it directly right now. It's behind the camera. Once I run out of things to do here, I'll be working on my Semper Vivum, Haworthia, Haworthiopsis, Gasteria, Aloe, and whatever shade loving plants there is. So it's a shade garden. <laughs> Shady, partial shade. Yeah, partial shade because it gets overhead sun only at noon time but otherwise for the rest of the day it's just bright in direct sunlight so no good for echeverias but good for the shade tolerant plants from maria patricia orozco hi from florida usa i have a question which succulents do you think are the best for my climate it's hot and humid most of the time and really hot during summer i'm starting with the succulents i have some already but i'm not sure which ones will stand this weather thank you in advance from what I know, Florida, there's the climates. The climate there goes from subtropical to tropical monsoon, savanna. Uh, I can't remember what the proper names are. So it depends mainly on which zone you're in. If you're in the subtropics, then there might be a bit of leeway. But if you're more in the southern part of Florida. Down, and it's more tropical down there then you might need to be more careful about your selection and your and mainly your growing medium your soil mix I put together a video about it before um, planting or growing succulents in the it's about growing succulents in the tropics and I'm going to link it down below for this corner here so please check it out from Kalo Lovet, I like seeing your little boy in the back playing the gravel. So good for kids. So rare nowadays. Great vid. Yes, whenever he finds out that I'm out in the garden, he refuses to stay inside. He would like. He likes lingering around, playing behind me in the background. Sometimes he interacts with me and the camera, but most of the time he just does his own thing. So, which is why we got him this whole bunch of uh, small trucks. So you can play with it in the garden. 
So this next bunch of comments are similar in that they are raising the same question. And let me read them one by one. First is from Patricia Morgan. Looks lovely Chuck, just a thought, should you put a moisture barrier between the dirt and the house wall? The next one is from Judy Seal. Hi Chuck, don't you need to line the wall to protect from damp? And last one from Jaya F. Aren't, aren't you worried about the moisture being held against the bricks? I've responded with a quick version of my answer to your comments, but uh, and but it's such a large answer that I need I probably need to address this in this video. I'm no expert builder, but I do know a few things, and my Google Foo is strong. When we bought this house a few years ago, part of the description that came with the documents with it was that the exterior of the house is brick veneer, which means that the outermost layer would be a layer of bricks, and there would be this tiny air gap behind the bricks before the drywall starts. This tiny gap would be the drainage layer, and we know that the bricks are porous, which means that it can allow, it can absorb water, it can allow water to pass through, and brick veneer, with the brick veneer design, that's of no consequence because once the water goes through the brick layer, it just heads down into the drainage layer and you know, no water problems. And the other thing that made me not so worried about it is because, hey, the, the bricks has been exposed to the elements for the past 20 years and there has been plants. When we moved in, I assume that because there's lots of trellis here and there was, a, there was a huge bush there which we removed when we came in. It would only stand to reason that it was always wet or almost always wet when, when they got watered or when the rain would fall. So for the past two decades, it has already been exposed to a lot of moisture and the interior of the house looks fine. And this is why I'm pretty confident about it. You know, I'm not too worried about moisture being retained. But having said that, I did give a bit of space behind the plants on the mound. So if I, when I water it, so when I water the raised garden bed, um, the plants are in front, which means that I only had, have to drench the front part. So if anything, there, there wouldn't be much water left to hit the bricks because they would be flowing downwards immediately, especially since the soil mix that I'm using is very loose. The risk is low. And if they do hit the brick wall, then they would be going down the drainage layer anyway. So. Not really a problem. I've linked, I've linked a video in the description, and maybe you can check out this corner here, because I needed to double check my understanding of brick veneers. And this one was a very visual video showing the build process. So I hope that video would help explain better than I am trying right now, because I'm no builder, so you know, I'm making a lot of assumptions, I guess. And now we have a look at the previous recap video, which came out last week, from Erika Succulents. Gorgeous looking Romeo. I do have a soft spot for them. I have one in my collection that I got from Pots Galore at the end of February. It has always been slightly wrinkled and its leaves are not very plump. And definitely not as plump as the gorgeous one you have there. It is plump. Would you have any ideas to help me liven it up? I've exhausted my ideas. So, I think I already mentioned it in my comment, in my reply, but basically, you mentioned Pots Galore, which means that you're also local, you're from Melbourne as well, and I can only assume that you're also experiencing this winter right now. First things first, the Romeo is dormant right now in winter, and it would start growing again in spring. And because of that, do not water them as much. <laughs> And if you do, just make sure that the, the soil is well draining, it doesn't retain too much, but otherwise, give it, don't give it much water. That being said, a, a little bit of watering every now and then is okay, just, you know, just to keep it, just so it's not bone dry, because too dry and it starts, and it would also suffer, you know, it's a delicate balance, but it's better to be, 
it's better to be on a bit of the dry side rather than overwatering them right now because it's dormant. So unless it's going really dry or it's starting to look that it's rotting, I wouldn't worry about a little bit of wrinkliness, a little bit of nut plumpness. If you're really worried about it, you could uh, there's there's a couple of things that you can do. You could you could uproot it, take a look at the roots, and just make sure that there's nothing, no damage there. There's no rot. There's no. Uh, just make sure. Just make sure that everything's healthy, because because if you see any wrinkling on the leaves, it means one of two things. The first one is obviously it's not getting enough water. The second one is it might be getting too much water and and the stem or the roots below has started to rot so it has cut off itself or you know damaged or the stem is damaged which means that there's water is not flowing upwards to the leaves anymore and that's a very scary scenario because once they once it develops root rot and stem rot it only travels upwards and by the time that you could detect it the plant is a gunner and stem rot happens so fast that most of the time at least personally I think that by the time you detect it it's already too late and as you know this is my second Romeo and I'm hoping that my experience with the previous one that died would be enough to keep this alive we'll see <laughs> from Alex Curtis I'd like a Romeo one day you'll get it someday <laughs> From always growing vlogs so Frank here is saying that uh, let me get it he was referring to this plant and he said that he has a few shots of it and sent it over on Facebook so I'll have a look at that later on he also mentioned that the Affinis the black knights and other dark uh, colored plants they thrive better in filtered light rather than direct sunlight and I agree with Frank here because the dark coloring on their leaves means that they absorb much of the sunlight rather than reflect it so so they get a lot more damage compared to the lighter plants which is why from now on I'm going to place them in a slightly shady spot well not so shady but I'm going to give them a microclimate that's more relaxed compared to the ones that are ex fully exposed to the elements so maybe plant them with other plants that are a bit taller or right next to a bowl or something or a tall pot there's a few places I can think of but we'll see from green lady totally my problem sell and buy more yes this is all of us from crazy cactus collector beautiful new plants thank you from the dub rose one Love the new plants, you can never never have enough succulents. Yes! Truth! And finally, let's have a look at the comments from the last few days from other videos. So on episode 41, from Kenny Lam, can you propagate afterglow from leaves? Yes, you could, but the success rates are much lower compared to the others. So, you could try. And if you do, make sure to try with the plumper, thicker leaves from the flower stalks rather than getting from the main plant. Because for one, they're going to reduce the size of the main plant. And you know, I don't really like messing around with the main plant, especially when, especially these types of cultivars where the leaf density is low, meaning they don't have as much leaves. So I don't want to waste much of the main leaves. On episode 67 from Dana Bright, Bright, love your videos, don't like the music. <laughs> Sorry about that, because in episode 67, the music was quite loud. Yeah, sometimes I get overboard, so noted. <laughs> I'll, I'll try toning it down. On episode 14 from Lucrecia Matujo, where do you buy the pebbles as top dressing? I get my pebbles from a landscaping supplies company because it's a lot cheaper there compared to going to a gardening section of a big box store or something. <clears throat> and I tend to buy them in bulk 
And more specifically, I got it from Soilworks and I'm so blessed to have them as my sponsor because landscaping supplies, rocks, pebbles, soil, it's one of the larger expenditures in my channel. So, so having it sponsored by Soilworks works perfectly for me. From episode 41, from Jesse Vett Camacho, the fart. <laughs> And that's it for this episode of Recap. I'm hoping that the weather tomorrow will be great so I could continue working on the garden. Otherwise, we'll see. I'll see you in the next episode. Bye.